Okay, 17 minutes. So let me talk real quick. I like I like to call God as the OG. What I'm about to say, you guys, it you guys really need to know the scriptures to really see what I'm to actually believe all that I'm going to tell you because it's all going to be true but you're going to question it if you don't know the scriptures so what am I, what do I mean by that anyone who's actually read the bible will realize that god has a certain pattern in the things he says and in the things he does and he gets upset when you fail to recognize the role that he played, even though at at from a physical standpoint, it would seem like he played absolutely no role. When Nebuchadnezzar built his empire, he thought he built his empire. Now, from a physical perspective, he did build his empire. But even then, Nebuchadnezzar was not the one who built his empire. His servants and magistrates were the ones who built the empire of Babylon. His servants, his warriors, they fought the battles. They built brick by brick his empire. But Nebuchadnezzar, since he is the king, the servant won't dare say, we built the empire for Nebuchadnezzar. No, no, no. They, 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 they better be careful not to say that, right? Nebuchadnezzar will say, yeah, I built my empire. Now, again, from, from a physical perspective, it's true that his servants built it. And from a kingly perspective, it's true that King Nebuchadnezzar built his empire. But it was actually God who built his empire. And when Nebuchadnezzar failed to recognize that, God punished him and made him turn into, not physically into a beast, but he made him go crazy and act like a beast. You know, for about seven years or something like that. He said, let the dew pass over him for se seven times, something like that. And then when, when he, until he recognizes by whose authority and by whose hand he received his kingdom and that who it is that actually built his kingdom for him, God. But again, remember, from a human perspective, God didn't build his empire, but yes, he did. But you won't, from a human perspective, you won't see it that way. But the truth of the matter is that God did build King Nebuchadnezzar's empire. I like to mention this other point um, about the... Uh, when there was when there there was a there was a um, group of people called the Edomites and God exacted vengeance against them, but God used men to do the to to to, to um, administer the punishment. But when God was speaking in relation to that event, He said that there was no man with Him. And he was astonished that there was nobody there to help him. Right now, to cut it short, God used men to do it. It was men, warriors, physical human flesh, who went to exact um, vengeance against the Edomites. But God said that no, there was no man with him. So, in other words, those men who fought the wars, they do not take the credit, God does. So, so men actually did the fighting, but by God's authority. Nebuchadnezzar built his empire, and not even he himself, his subjects actually built the empire. But since Nebuchadnezzar is king, he, you could say he built his empire, but it was by God's authority. So it was actually God who did the fighting. It was God who built the empire. God made you and I. But did God actually make you and I? Now, from a physical perspective, we will fail to recognize God's hand in it, right? We got here because of our parents. But 
if our parents were, were to say that they made us, God would have every right to be upset because they did not make us. It was by God's authority that they made us. But who actually did the act of making love and getting pregnant and then giving birth? Right, so our fathers made love to our mothers. Our mothers got pregnant and then voila, we were born. But God made every single human that lives. Not directly, indirectly. God built Nebuchadnezzar's kingdom, not directly, indirectly. God exacted vengeance against the Edomites, not directly, indirectly. Let's go back a little bit more. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to help you to understand something. Let's go back a little bit more. God made Seth and Abel and Cain, but through Adam and Eve. But God first made Adam, but then God made Eve, but through Adam. And then God made all the children of mankind through Adam and Eve and through their descendants. But then God made Adam through the earth because he didn't, he didn't make Adam from scratch. He made Adam from the dust of the earth. But then God didn't make the dust of the earth from scratch. He made the dust of the earth from the light in Genesis. Because remember, everything that exists is light. You guys got to stick with me. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm, getting, I'm, I'm going somewhere. I want you to understand how God works and talks. In Genesis, I made a video on this already, like two videos or three videos ago. I'll be losing track. God said, let there be light. But the light that he said, let there be, is not the stars and, you know, the luminaries of the, of the, of the sky that illuminates in the night because that wasn't made until many days later so again you have to watch my other video where i explain this in detail but i'm trying to get somewhere first so i'm just brushing over it so when he said let there be light that let there be light was the big bang that big bang is what god used to make everything else this is how god works he makes one thing then he does everything through that one thing. And as you go further down the line, it would seem as if God is not playing a role at all because of the amount of mediators that are playing a part in the action. So you kind of get lost in the details and forget who the author, who the OG, who the, who the originator is. So, let me go back a little bit. So, God makes his son. You, you see, let me say it this way so that it really hits home. God never really did anything after he made his son. Okay, now I don't want you to take this the wrong way. And God already knows where I'm getting at. So you might think I'm like blaspheming or something. Not at all. The only thing that God actually created was one thing or one person. After that, God sat back and 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 instructed this person what to do. He told him, do this. Let, let there be light. The person does it. God saw that it was good. Mind you, if God himself does it, he doesn't need to verify if it's good or bad. It is good because God did it. But since the person who is doing it is not God, God is going to verify and say, yeah, well done. You did a good job. 
Now let there be an expanse between the waters and the waters. The person does it. Now after a couple of days later, let there be luminaries, not let there be light. That was already in the first, that was the first command. Let there be luminaries. So God takes that initial light and divides it into different things, into different luminaries. Again, you have to watch my other video where I explain that. Things like just two or three videos back. Or one video back. So, let me go down the line and I'll explain further. God makes one thing in his image. Who, who that person is, his son. Through this son, God makes other sons. So now these other sons are not begotten sons of God because they didn't come directly from God. One person came directly from God. And then after that, one person came directly from God. Everything else came through that person that just came through God. So, though God has many sons, none of them are begotten of God. None of them are created directly from God. Begotten, created directly is the same thing. The original Hebrew word means exactly the same thing. Created, to come from, to come from your essence, to beget. Now, in human terms, we only beget through procreation. But this is not, we, we, we can't be limited into, into attributing that same form of begetting as if God is limited to that. Come on, people, right? So the son first is begotten by God, and then all the other sons are begotten by the son of God, not begotten by God himself, right? And then God commands his son to make the universe. But when they make the universe, let there be light. That is the only thing that was made. The, the, the Big Bang is the only thing that was made. After the Big Bang was made, everything else was made through that Big Bang. Because you have to understand that we are all light. Everything that exists, the, the stars, your flesh, dirt, um, maggots, um, food, glass, gold, everything came from light. So that initial Big Bang Everything, it was just a di dividing of the Big Bang. So that's why Genesis, again, I explained this in my in the, in the video, like two, three, or one video ago. After the Big Bang was made, nothing else was made. It, it was just a, a separating and an organizing of the D Big Bang, a separating of the darkness from the light, um, organizing from, from, it was chaotic, and then from that chaos came order. I explained it perfectly, okay? So... Just as God made Christ and then everything else came through Christ, God made the Big Bang through Christ because everything came through Christ, right? So God didn't directly do it. But again, scripture will tell you that God did it. But that's why I gave you the examples in the beginning. He used mediators to do it. But since he's the author, all the credit goes to him regardless. God did not actually with his hands fight the wars. He used men to fight the wars. He didn't actually build brick by brick, you know, the, 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 the empire of Nebuchadnezzar or Babylon the Great. He used men to do it. But still, when you fail to give God the, that, that credit, because from the human perspective, it will seem like God played no role. God punished Nebuchadnezzar for failing to recognize God's authority, right? And by whose authority he received his kingship. Okay, so the Big Bang... Then God makes everything through the Big Bang, but through his, his son is the one that's doing it. So God is commanding his son. His son does it. God says, good job. You know, okay. Now, let's get back to Adam. So now, God doesn't make Adam from scratch. No, he's going to use a substance from the Big Bang that has now become the earth. He's going to use a substance from the earth to make man. And then he's going to use man to make another substance, Eve. He took man's ribs. This is how God works. He's not wasteful. If he made this, he's going to do things through this. He's he, he He's not going to make man from thin air. No. He's going to make man from something that he has already made. He made the angels 
from something that he already originally made. But the very first thing he made, there is no other source to come from except from he himself. So this very first thing that God makes is going to be very special. Because there is no other place for it to come from except from God's very own essence. Now, the angels, they can come from a different essence than from God's essence. Because God has already made something for them to come out of. His son. God has already made something for Adam to come out of. The dirt. God has already made something for Eve to come out of. Adam. God has already made things... For the descendants of humanity to come from. Their parents. God has already made things. For the empire of Nebuchadnezzar to come out of. The humans that he has already made. Through his son. God has already made things. For the earth to come out of. The big bang. Which he organized through his son. So God is the OG. There are many parts of the Bible where. Apart from the examples I gave you in the beginning, there are many parts of the Bible where God literally just sits back and lets his sons do things. The prince of, the prince of Persia was holding back an angel that was sent to deliver a message to Daniel. Now, God really loved Daniel or loves Daniel, I should say, because present tense, because he's a God of the living, not of the dead. So Daniel is still alive in the eyes of God. Okay, so... Daniel was very favored by God, is very favored by God. And from the moment that Daniel prayed, God sent an angel to deliver a message to him. But there was an angel in the prince of Persia because Daniel was living in that realm. That prince of Persia resisted the angel for 21 days. Why didn't God prevent that angel from resisting the angel that, God, that he sent? No, he just let Mikael go and fight the battles because God is just sitting back. He has sons to take care of that. This is how God works. I hope you guys get, get the picture I'm trying to let you understand. Christ is not God, but he's the closest thing to God.